scripture I'll be reading this morning is from Hebrews 11, verse 1, 30 to 31. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And then I'll be reading uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea, in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the uh, pieces that uh, we got out of our uh, MCCI process was to, uh, to really kind of spend a year focused on one particular mission, and uh, this year we've been focused on Kids Stop. Uh, it's been a ministry in our church uh, for 30 years. It's an after-school program, uh, really for children from Lowell and Hawthorne Elementary Schools. Uh, it's a free after-school program, which really kind of helps uh, many families who have uh, two, uh, maybe three jobs within their families, and so uh, it's been a very uh, a great program, and as we hear stories of those who have grown up in Kid Stop and then have gone on to uh, uh, stay in their studies and continue in their lives. Um, so we've been focused at, at, when we say the term signature mission, that means uh, we're pretty focused on that particular mission, and and so we're grateful for people who have been given, uh, you know, backpacks and stuff as we have a special day in August when we'll be helping them. Uh, we got some children, they're going to the zoo and some of the people are going to go along with them. Uh, we sure thank that. And, uh, and our choir had the pancake piece where they uh, raised some uh, money for a refrigerator so that they can store their foods. And so there's been a lot of ways. And one of the exciting things is we're going to be able to now, because of some of the uh, adjustments we've made in our building, to offer a middle school program. So we're looking forward to adding uh, that element uh, to uh, that Kid Stop uh, mission. So uh, we're grateful for uh, that focus. Uh, but just again, wanted to help us all uh, see how when we focus on one particular area, how that can grow and enhance and be strengthened uh, for God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the, the gift and the power of faith. And in many times in our lives, we, we wonder, um, where are you? Uh, are you with us? 
Are we in this alone? And yet time and time again, you uh, speak to us. Today, as we uh, ponder again uh, the life of Joshua and Rahab, we, we pray that you would deepen our faith, that we truly would place our trust in you as our ancestors of old did. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ray uh, Blankenship uh, was um, sitting at his breakfast table. He was looking out the window because it had been raining for two days straight. And it had got so much rain that the waters, you know, in a ditch that was outside his house were starting to rise. And in fact, that particular morning when he got up, he looked out the window and he, he noticed that it was really rushing. And all of a sudden, as he was looking out, he saw a little girl was caught in this rushing water and was drifting by his window at that very time. And, and so he immediately jumped out of the house and began to run down because he knew that at the end of the road, there was a, a pretty bad culvert. Uh, and then it would even add more water and the little girl might get lost in that. And so he goes out and he runs down and he's able to get to her. And he's trying to pull her back up on shore out of this uh, rushing water. And uh, he discovers that he can't do it. So he literally jumps in and grabs a hold of her. And they're getting down close to this culvert. And all of a sudden he just reaches back. And he doesn't remember exactly what happened. But he reached back and he felt like something like a rock. And he was able to hold on. And he thought, well, if I hold on long enough, somebody will uh, come and help us. And pretty soon it was getting wearier and wearier, and finally he figured out, well, I'm just going to have to get us out of this. And finally he just pulled himself up, and they got over to the shore. And just as they were getting out, there were some folks that came and helped them. But he saved the little girl. Ray Blankenship uh, got the Coast Guard Silver Life Saving Award because of his heroics that day. The most interesting thing about this story is that Ray Blankenship doesn't know how to swim. Doesn't know how to swim. So what makes this guy just jump out into the water? What gave him the faith that he could do something when he didn't know how to swim? We've been on a journey, it seems like a long journey, through Hebrews chapter 11. If we know the story behind it, the reason the author was writing to the Hebrew people is they were under heavy persecution. These were Jewish Christians in Jerusalem who had accepted Christ and recognized him as the Messiah, and so as they began to follow him, there were others who weren't so happy that they were following Jesus. And so they were being persecuted, and some even losing their lives for their faith. And so people were beginning to wonder, well, where is God in the midst of this persecution? If we are followers of Jesus, how do we keep the faith? And so the author of Hebrews is saying, well, Jesus is still that high priest, the one who offered his life, and in so in doing so, offers his life to us. And so in Hebrews chapter 11, we call this the hall of faith. Because then he says, in faith, and he goes to each biblical ancestor. So we have uh, shared with Abel, who offered his very best to God. We heard about Enoch, who walked with God to the point that he didn't literally die. Noah, who built an ark and saved his people and his family. Abraham and Sarah, who moved from their family, left their homeland on the call of God and went to a new land, a new place. Isaac and Rebekah continued the covenant of God, God's promise to Moses that his, this nation would be as many as the stars. Jacob wrestled with God and found peace. Joseph Seeing the pic bigger picture of God in his life, he saved the people of Israel from hunger. Moses, the lawgiver, the one who saved the people from slavery, took them out of Egypt 
to the promised land. And today we look at Je Joshua, the leader who takes over for Moses. Now when we uh, see this story, when we look at this litany of biblical ancestors, the point is, so how do we understand faith, their faith in God, their faith in the promise of the covenant that passed from generation to generation to generation? How do we securely and faithfully stay faithful to God? How do we place our trust in this God by looking at their lives? Now, Joshua uh, has been with Moses from the very beginning. He was one of the slaves in Egypt. And there's something about Joshua that Moses took notice of because he noticed that when Joshua would bring and gather a group of men, that he was fearless, that he would lead them into battle. In fact, Moses never led a battle. It was always Joshua who would take the men and lead them when they were in, uh, in needed to go into a battle or into other places. It was always Joshua that actually led them into battle. Joshua is an interesting character in the fact that he's very, been very faithful to God through all of this. He trusted God. He followed at every command that Moses gave to him. And now Moses has been mentoring him all through the wilderness. As we remember, the people of Israel sinned, and so they didn't able to go into the promised land until uh, they came to that 40 years of wandering. In the midst of their wandering, Moses was mentoring Joshua. And so now jo Moses has died, and now Joshua is put in charge. Now, one of the most difficult things I think it is for human beings is to follow somebody who has been a leader for so long, like Moses, that it's a very difficult to be the next person who comes in after. Because you know what's going to happen. Well, Moses did it this way when any time Joshua made a decision or said something to the people. And so when we read this passage from Joshua chapter 1, it's a, it's a great a uh, picture of not only the importance of mentoring, but also helping each of us understand our journeys of life and faith in our relationship with God. How many times does he say, God, to Joshua, be strong and courageous? Be strong and courageous. That's kind of funny, isn't it? I mean, Joshua was fearless when it came to going into battle. He was fearless. And men would follow him, and he was usually the first one in. And yet God says to him, be strong and courageous. Because he not only had to lead the people over into the Jordan, but his most important attribute that he had to learn and continue to grow in is the law of God. It says in the passage, be strong. Be strong in the faith. It says that he is supposed to meditate on God's word every day. And then through that meditation and building that relationship with God, his relationship with God would be stronger and more firm in the face of going it alone. Because he didn't have Moses to lean on anymore. He was the person now in charge. He was the one who would then lead the people in the most most important second phase of the covenant, and that is to lead the people in, into the new land, the land of milk and honey, the land that God had promised all of these biblical ancestors. Joshua was put in charge of bringing the people across the Jordan River into this new land, this new land that was given to them. His first focus was to say, be strong. Be strong, and I don't think it was only strong physically, but strong mentally and emotionally. So often when we face hardships in our lives, we know that it has stress on our lives or there's a burden on our lives, but it doesn't only affect us physically, sometimes it affects us mentally. Our minds begin to race miles after miles, faster and faster, because we're worrying about all these things and what we should do. 
But God says to Joshua, be strong. Be strong in your mind. Be strong in your heart. Be strong with your body in the sense of understanding how we would trust God to lead us. That trusting God is the place where we find that strength that helps us in all those moments of life. Ralph Houck was the manager of the New York Yankees for many years during the 60s and 70s. And during that period of time, uh, baseball players would play, if you imagine, playing 162 games, 154 games, a, a lot of games every day. And a lot of times, every week, there would be double headers. And many of the players by this time in August were getting their bodies and their mental, they were getting kind of weary. And so they would approach the manager and say, is there a way I could get a day off? Because, you know, it just seems like I just need a day to kind of catch, catch up. And uh, Hauk knew that he didn't really want his players to do that. And so what he said to a player would be, okay, uh, I want you just to start this game, you know, go about two innings and then I'll replace you with somebody else. Well, what would happen invariably every time that he sent those first players in is after the second inning, they didn't want to come out because they had gotten into the spirit of the game. They would gotten into the spirit of the activity. It was like, well, I can't come out now. No matter how tired, how difficult it was, they were going to keep playing because of the spirit of the game. In Joshua, we see how God calls us to be strong, not only just physically, but more importantly, spiritually and physically spiritually and emotionally and mentally. I'm not much of a golfer, but when you watch golf on TV and those very top echelon pro golfers, invariably you hear they don't talk about their skill as a, as a golfer. They talk about their mental capacity and how to face when they have difficult shots or difficult things happening. It's the mental capacity that is critical to that journey of being a great golfer. Hence, in our journeys of life and faith, for us to ultimately trust God, we are to be strong and receive God's power and faith. In fact, Joshua hears these words, just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you. I will always be with you. I will not fail you. I will always be with you. The second word is courageous. The great uh, World War I pilot, Eddie Rick Rickenbacker, once said, Courage is doing what you are afraid to do. Courage is, what you are, courage is doing what you are afraid to do. There can be no courage unless you're scared. Many times in our lives we find ourselves scared, afraid, not sure. It takes courage to stay faithful to God. It takes courage to step out and, and believe and be faithful and trusting God will care for us even when the moments seem very dark. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. It is sold by God three times to someone who I would imagine is very strong and courageous. But God is reminding Joshua that now as he moves into this leadership role, that he's not alone, that it's not him that should be the focus. The focus should be on God. And hence, as we have seen through the series of looking at our biblical ancestors again, time and over again, it was about their faith that carried them through. Their faith in God, their trust in God carried them through those moments. In the second chapter of Joshua, the story of uh, Rahab is the story of the city of Jericho. And, you know, one of the biblical stories we've grown up is we know that Joshua led the people of Israel. They didn't literally attack Jericho. They just went around it seven times, and the walls came tumbling down because of the power of God. But in preparation for this, Joshua sent two spies to go in and just kind of checked the place out. And the people there in Jericho knew there were two spies. And Rahab was a woman who stood by, was near the gate. And so they thought she was hiding these two spies. And she was. 
So they were coming to her house to search for the two spies. She had them hid. And then she said uh, to those who were coming to seek the two spies, they've already left, they've gone out of the gate, they were here, but they're gone. She protected them. She was courageously caring for her people, herself and her family. The story goes on that later, when those two spies were really leaving, she said to them, your God came to me in a dream, and I know that he is coming, and I just want you to keep my family and myself safe. And they said, well, if you put out a, a certain cord, a colored cord, we will know. We will pass over this house. We will save you. Literally almost the Passover story again. And when the walls came tumbling down, they remembered their promise to Rahab. And hence, here she is, many years again, later, offered as an example of courage. She heeded God's call she hid the spies to save her and her family. She recognized the power of God in her life. So we are to be strong, we are to be courageous. And it's hopefully when we look at the lives of Joshua and Rahab, and as we've looked at the other biblical ancestors, that we have somehow captured this sense of faith. Each week we've been reading Hebrews chapter 1, or verse 1, that said, Faith is a reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. Time and time again people say to me, well, I can't see God. But friends, God is all around us. We can see God if we open our eyes and, and place our faith and trust knowing that God, God is there for us. Just as he promised Moses and Enoch, and Noah, and Jacob, and Joseph, and Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. Remain faithful to God as God is faithful to us. A young uh, missionary had taken under his wing a young boy who became a Christian and as he grew up into the faith, he later in his 20s uh, came to this missionary and said, I have memorized the whole Sermon on the Mount. Now that's Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. He said, I memorized it all. And so then he went and began, and he began to recite those three chapters, the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave, the sermon that he gave, he memorized it. And he said, well, that is great. How did you do that? And he said, well... I really memorized it because I lived it. I memorized it because I lived everything that Jesus said in those three chapters. And once I lived it, I knew it in my heart. I knew it permanently. The gift of faith is the gift of trusting God in all things in our lives. In surrendering our lives, surrendering our souls, Placing and understanding God's powerful gift of trust in our lives. As we have uh, made this journey and looked at the ancestors, may their faith encourage and strengthen our faith so that we too can be strong and courageous. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you call each of us by name. You know us. We are thankful that you have provided mentors in our lives who have shown us the way of faith. Not only those biblical ancestors we have been focusing on, but those in our own journeys of life. May it be a, a grandparent, a parent, a Sunday school teacher, a pastor, a fellow faithful disciple. We thank you for those mentors who have provided for us. And we thank you, O oh Lord, that you teach us and offer to us the gifts of strength and courage when we are afraid. Help us to remain faithful to you as you are faithful to us. Give us these gifts of strength and courage that we may truly 
find ourselves faithful to you as we walk as your people together. For we ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Our uh, hymn of commitment is Trust and Obey, number 467. Hymn of commitment, Trust and Obey.